Hey, good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, today is August 3rd, and that means that well, I, actually, for me, it's not August 3rd. I'm recording this on Thursday, July 21st. Uh, my wife and I, hopefully today, or if everything's gone according to plan, uh, August 3rd, uh, we will be on our 25th anniversary uh, cruise uh, to Alaska. So uh, we're if, if all goes according to plan, uh, today for you, Wednesday the 3rd, uh, we are on shore in Juneau, Alaska. And we don't have anything like specifically planned, but we're looking forward to doing some fun stuff on shore. We'll see what, what that might entail. Um, so yeah, uh, we're far, far away from you right now, but we appreciate the fact that through your prayers and through the love that we have for each other, that we're close in that way. Uh, so yeah, on Sunday, you got to hear from Elvis Gian, one of my favorite pre uh, preachers that we have uh, ever have in this church. I love Elvis. And, uh, he was preaching out of Second Timothy chapter two and the latter verses of chapter two, and uh, I don't know what he's going to say. Like today, when I'm recording this, I have no idea what he's going to say. Um, I am not going to be able to to. I haven't watched his sermon yet, and so uh, so instead, you know, I normally these devotional videos I I riff off of things that were in my sermon for the Sunday before, uh, and uh, I don't know how to riff off of what Elvis has said. So I'm, instead what I'm doing is I'm just riffing off the passage. So um, today I want to talk about 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, which is a great verse. And yesterday I talked about the first part of it. Um, to, the Apostle Paul is writing to his friend Timothy and is saying to him, look, uh, in in God's house, there are, there are different kinds of bowls. And he's talking about people, and people are, are represented by bowls in this. And then and there's some bowls that God uses for kind of, uh, you know, uh, holy and honorable purposes, and some uh, bowls that are used for the things that uh, are, are more difficult uh, and aren't as pleasant, right? Uh, that there's, he calls it dishonorable uses, but he's not talking there about like, you know, lying, cheating, stealing, stuff like that. But, but some vessels are used for sort of the behind the scenes uh, kinds of stuff. And some vessels are used for the in front of the scenes stuff. And um, he says, if you want to become one of the uh, sort of in front of the scenes kind of people, uh, you got to you got to do certain things. Right? There's 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 certain uh, uh, tools and certain uh, plans you need to put into place in order to be used for kind of the more uh, honored uh, purposes. And what are those, right? Uh, yesterday we talked about uh, one of those tools, which is fleeing youthful passions, fleeing youthful passions, uh, running away from uh, letting your, your, your feelings and your passions and your desires control you, right? Don't do that, but instead exercise self-control, which as we said yesterday is really spirit of God control. Uh, allow the spirit of God to control your behavior and your actions and your feelings, right? Rather than the other way around. Um, but that's not all the Apostle Paul says. So here's in 2 Timothy 2.22, he says, So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. So he's telling you to, to flee from letting your, your feelings control you. And when you're fleeing from those things, you're, you're instead you're headed the opposite direction, right? You're pursuing righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Righteousness, faith, love, and peace, and some of those are among the fruit of the Spirit, right? But all of them are, are not about kind of what you accomplish, but all of them are about your inner character, right? Uh, he wants you to pursue um, who you are inside, righteousness, faith, love, peace. Uh, he wants you to become a different sort of person, right? Uh, not the person who's controlled by their feelings, not the person who's controlled by their desires, 
but a person who is motivated by righteousness, motivated by faith and love and peace. Uh, you know, when we're looking to see, well, who should we have uh, working in, in sort of public positions in the church? Who should we hire as the pastor, right? Who should we have as, as our, our outreach pastor? Who should we have as our, our worship leaders, right? Who should we have in leadership positions in the church? Oftentimes we look for people who are successful at accomplishing tasks, right? Um, we look for education, right? I don't know, on my wall here, you can see there's my diploma from Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary, right? I, I have a master's degree, a master of divinity, right? And I, and I have, uh, I have schooling and learning that, that is, sort of was part of the requirements for being in the job that I'm in. Um, but, uh, but that's not what Paul says to pursue. He doesn't say pursue a degree. Uh, sometimes we, we, we talk about sort of accomplishments, right? But if you look at my resume, when I, when I was applying to be a pastor, I talk about I've led Bible studies and I worked as a university staff person for 10 years and, and I trained leaders and, uh, you know, I, I spoke at conferences and planned, planned retreats and you know, all these different things that I've accomplished in my career before uh, coming here served as a pastor for eight years in Rochester, New York. Here are all the things I've done, but Paul doesn't say pursue accomplishments, right? He doesn't say pursue education. He doesn't say pursue accomplishments. He doesn't say pursue you know, looking uh, good and, and being sort of attractive. He doesn't say pursue wealth. What he says is pursue inner character. And, and you know, I, 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 I know that when this church was looking for uh, a pastor, it also was looking at inner character questions, but that's what we need to do, right? Is to look for inner character. And if you want to be, if you want to grow into a position of leadership in the church, you should grow those qualities. Grow, sorry, cross there. You should grow uh, in righteousness, peace, uh, and love, right? And 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 faith. Work on who you are inside, because who you are inside should be what we're looking for not accomplishments in education and those things. Now, those things are good, and I am grateful for my education, and I'm grateful for all the, the experience that I've been able to have in ministry that does help me in my job day to day. But, but without character, those things are meaningless. Without character, what you have in that then is, is a highly educated, uh, experienced monster, <laughs> right? You don't want that. You, you want someone of good character in those positions of leadership. So you want to become uh, a vessel for God's use. For, for, uh, you are used by God in, uh, you are able to be used by God in what, whatever condition you're in. That's uh, key, that, right? That we're all vessels in God's house, house and he uses us all. But he uses some for some purposes and some for other purposes. So you want to become a vessel for sort of the, the more honorable, honored positions, then, then do these things, but, uh, work on your character. And, but it's not, and the last thing I want to say about this is, I think it's important to note that it's not just you working on these things alone. He says, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Uh, it's a joint endeavor. Uh, you know, I, I, I talk to people all the time who say things like, well, I don't want to be part of a church. I got to work on, I just got to work on me. Uh, okay, working on you is important. And that's what Paul says here, right? Work on you. But you work on you side by side with other people who are working on themselves, right? And and you're helping them to work on themselves, and they're working, they're helping you to work on yourself. And frankly, what happens is, and this, this is the way it goes, you're you know you're working on yourself next to somebody who's working on themselves, and and in your interactions, you you bump up against each other, right? And you you hurt each other's feelings, and you do things that are offensive, and you you chew in a different way, and whatever, you know, and. And you get on each other's nerves, right? And that's when you start to put things like righteousness, faith, love, and peace into practice. Because you've got other people to practice it with. You know, you, uh, how do you learn about forgiveness if nobody ever hurts your feelings, right? How do you learn about forgiveness if nobody ever wrongs you? How do you learn how to bear with one another if nobody's ever there to get on your nerves, right? Uh, we, in order to practice the one another's, the, 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 the relationship that we, the, the relationship of faith and, and love and peace, we have to have other people. 
who are also likewise working on themselves at the same time. So uh, we do these things in a community of faith, and that's what the church is supposed to be, right? People who are pursuing the improvement of their character, following Jesus Christ, worshiping him, worshiping him as Lord, inviting other people into the community uh, of faith, uh, and working on themselves and each other in that community. That's what the church is supposed to be, and that's what we're striving to be as a church. Our mission at New Beginnings Church is to make disciples, more disciples, and better disciples of Jesus Christ. That's what this verse is all about. Now, I'm going to stop talking because I'm getting all head up. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us, and thank you that in your love for us, you call us to righteousness, faith, peace, and uh uh, together, Lord, uh, together. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to, uh, to eagerly desire to improve our character, improve our, um, our practice of faith, love, joy, peace, righteousness, the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Lord, when we're looking for leaders, help us to look for, for that character. Uh, as the most important thing. And for those of us who want to be leaders, Lord, help us to work on our character so that we're, we're uh, better able to uh, be used for uh, the, the honored uses that you, you put people to. Lord, I thank you for those who are working in positions that don't get honored, and that is a, a real blessing. And there's other passages which talk about that, but uh, this passage is talking about this topic in specific. Lord, I, I thank you for the opportunity for me and Karina to be on this cruise, and I pray that you would uh, have, help us to have a great time. And I pray that you bless everybody within the sound of my voice, uh, because you love each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.